Myrtle Beach, South Carolina this March. Surprise with Coastal Carolina beating Charleston Southern by 20. High point with the win to maintain first place, but getting some pressure, as you know, from UNC Asheville, which beat Winthrop and BMI, an easy winner start to finish over Longwood. 93 to 60 in this series. It's been dominated by one team lately, UNC Asheville, winning eight of the last nine. But tonight, a little bit different story. Stan Okoye has gone off for 18, and why is he playing so well? Step back jumper. I mean, you can see the reason why he is the preseason Big South player of the year. He is a matchup nightmare. You put a small guy on him, and he'll take him in the post. You put a big on him, and he's got this step back jumper, which he's worked on. I've been really impressed with his all around game. Yeah, he's hit that jumper three times tonight, and he started the game with that type of field goal, kind of set the pace for VMI. For the Bulldogs, they have three players in double figures so far, and the principal scoring for the Bulldogs, the backcourt. Really, Hornsby has been the most impressive. You know he can shoot the ball from the three-point line, 94% from the free throw line, but his ability to put the ball on the floor, break down the defense, and get to the rack for easy deuces has been impressive. Then the Meyer and Trent Meyer and Keith Hornsby story so far versus the scoring of Stan Okoye, who's the only man in double figures to this point for the key deaths. Well, Okoye, you asked right here, transition defense, though, has been an issue, and... Meyer has been on fire from the perimeter, knocking down shots, and this is a concern for BMI coming into this game, how fast UNC Asheville plays, and then this is what I'm talking about with Hornsby, his ability to put the ball on the floor and knock down shots. You know he can shoot the ball from the perimeter, and Dad is loving that right there. On the other end, BMI, this guy is a matchup nightmare. Showing off the range from the perimeter, that's just a pretty spin move right there. And he has been having his way with the defense of UNC Asheville. You know, not a lot was expected from this backcourt this year because they lost stars like Matt Dickey and J.P. Prim, but uh, Eddie Beatonball's got uh, house money from these two guys, both scoring 14 points tonight on a combined of 10 of 15 shooting. Let's look ahead to the second half. Can Meyer and Hornsby continue their scoring, and can Okoye continue to go off for the key deaths? Well, if they keep going at this clip right here, somebody might get to 100, but I think for VMI, it's going to come down to not turning the basketball over. On the other end, Okoye, I think, is going to be the guy that's going to put himself in a position to have a big second half. If you ever make it to historic Lexington in this campus, you'll get a chance to enjoy the drill team of VMI. 1,600 men and women on hand tonight at the post. Wouldn't it be cool if we took... Moments ago, the United States Navy ceremonial guard performing at halftime established back in 1931. The Navy ceremonial guard serves as the funeral escort and conducts all services for Navy personnel buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Well, you want to talk about trust. He's walking through some bayonets being swung right in front of his face and he did not blink once. I think the core was easily moved by this performance at the break. First half score, both teams shoot the ball particularly well. What about the rebounding edge of 24 to 12 for the key decks? And most of those were on the offensive end. Second chance points for VMI. They did a great job crashing the offensive glass. I'm talking about the great history here at the post. Born back in 1839, this is a quote from General George S. Patton. Give me an army of Citadel graduates and I'll win a battle. Give me a handful of BMI men and I'll win a war. I love that quote. And I still get goosebumps walking through the barracks today and the commitment that these guys make to our great country. Phenomenal, just an awesome atmosphere and what an awesome visit that we've had thus far. And tonight's a release for them. Now they're required to be at this game. You might be saying to yourself, wow, required to attend a basketball game, but typically they're on hand for Saturday afternoon games. This game moved to Friday night for television and ESPNU, and the commander said, I want to see everybody here, and everybody is here. And when we were walking through the barracks today with Coach, every single guy said, make some noise tonight, boys and girls, and they have not disappointed. It is loud in here tonight. Doug Buckland, the head coach, his eighth season with the Cadets, giving us a personal tour earlier this afternoon. McCoy starts the second half, 
much like he did the first with that jump shot, the step back that he missed it. Good hustle on the other end by 32 Will Weeks, but it is out of bounds to BMI in the home whites and on offense to start the second half. We mentioned the 24 to 12 edge here in the first half, and how does UNC Asheville do a better job to counter what is becoming a, uh, a real asset for the key dance? Well, I think the zone for UNC Asheville is their best defense because I think right now, man to man, they cannot guard Okoye. They just can't do it. And I think what's happening when they're playing man, they're getting out rebounded. So I think zone is the best, and then they got to identify guys when the shot goes up. Weeks right now defending Okoye on the elbow. Gives him some breathing room. And Stan pays him off in a three pointer in our eighth lead change of the game. Forty six for the key deaths, forty four for the Bulldogs. Well, out of the zone, if you're UNC Asheville, the one guy you need to keep an eye on is the preseason player of the year, Stan Okoye. You know, Barkham is now coached for the Big South's all-time top 10 scores in the 29-year history of the league. Atkinson rallies the Bulldogs with a three, which puts them ahead 47-46. Atkinson was another guy that had a really good first half, 10 points, and like his versatility as a big. If you remember, this game started with Brian Brown knocking down three three-pointers in less than four minutes. Meyer trying to get past Glasgow inside Cunningham, just a little too strong. They post Covington down low. Glasgow takes a look and shoots it. Glasgow having himself a ball game, showing off the mid-range floater, knocking down threes. Keep in mind, the Bulldogs aren't particularly deep. Typically play eight people. They can go to nine or ten if necessary. And this is just beautiful basketball, and he's been knocking down shots, and then right here, a nice little floater in the lane, everything going his way in this ball game. Back to live action. Three-pointer by Hornsby, a little short. Keith gets his own miss, follows it up, missed that one. Third opportunity, perhaps, and Cunningham going to the free throw line. DJ Cunningham, 6'10 junior, grew up two hours southeast of Columbus, Ohio. He's a guy that's starting to get back healthy. He got hurt last season, he's been battling injuries, and He's a guy that they're going to count on to give them some minutes, in particular when you're playing against a team like VMI that has two really good athletes in the interior. He's been through some knee problems, so a bit of a slow start to this year, but he's coming around nicely. Averaging three blocks a game. And you may get a chance to, to not only hear the core, but also see them. They're to the left of the free throw basket in which the Bulldogs are shooting, so there is uh, some disruption, if you will. Cunningham needs to concentrate because it's loud in here. He's a 61% free throw shooter, and he misses both of them. It remains BMI 51-47. Coye trying to shake loose of Weeks. Can't do it on a flash of the goal to get it inside Covington. Here's Hornsby, good rebounding guard for the Bulldogs. In transition, a three-pointer by Meyer. And what they say today in the film session, you can't let him breathe. And we watched him in film session, and when you see a tape team on tape, it's one thing. When you see him live, they are fast in transition. And one coming up for D.J. Covington. Who averages 13 points a game. There's so much attention on Akoye, and that time they lost sight of Covington, and he did a nice job finishing. Right here, you're going to see transition offense by UNC Asheville, and they are fast. Mix, miss or make, in particular, off of turnovers, they get the ball up the court quick.
Meyer double team 94 feet away. Could be a war of attrition tonight if the Bulldogs have enough stamina at the end to make it work. Foul called. Gore picks up his third personal foul as 32 weeks. And I like the move by Weeks. Man to man. Get the ball to the hole. He's another big that can put the ball on the floor and create contact. That's a great job that time, not settling for an outside jumper. Well, Weeks has been the top rookie in the conference two of the last four weeks. Considered to be a good passer. Tough kid, says his coach. And they're really high on him. Average is close to 10 points a game. Been a struggle lately, though, for the Bulldogs shooting the free throw. And the other night, 28 of 32 in the second half. They'll look at the field goal shooting. Atkinson in trouble, throws it up with the right hand. And Gore had a hand on it. It's going to be a rebound for Gore and a foul coming up on the Bulldogs. Three minutes into the second half, BMI with a three-point lead of 54-51. Eddie Beatenbaugh's team last year within a hair of becoming the first 16-seeded team in the NCAA tournament to beat a one seed. He's still thinking about that. They had him. Obviously an unbelievable run in the tournament for this team to take a great team like that down to the wire. I don't suppose it's any consolation that the entire country minus Syracuse fans and those uh, people that didn't want their brackets busted were rooting for UNC Asheville. Well, Stan Okoye, by the way, a double-double. That's his eighth of the year. Well, you asked if I felt he had a chance to play at the next level. There's no doubt he is definitely going to get an opportunity to play. Rise and shoot. Jumper from the outside of three for Jeremy Atkinson. You know, three balls, not his forte, but he can rise up and shoot quickly. The guy came in averaging 17 points a game, 79% free throw shooter, but high percentage guy from the floor. I think that's one of the few bad looks that Okoye had right there. It was a force three contested early in the shot clock. Get tempted when the other team's best scorer shoots a three and makes one? I think he's trying to get a little right back at you. Under 16 minute timeout momentarily at the next dead ball. These two teams could use a break and now they're to get one. Keydets 56 54 UNC Astro let it score tonight by number 15 Jeremy Atkinson the senior out of Elm City North Carolina. out tonight north versus south BMI 56 UNC Asheville 54 ACC Sunday Night Basketball is on ESPNU as player of the year candidate Mason Plumley leads the Blue Devils against the BC Eagles coverage begins with ACC Sunday Night Basketball 530 then it's Duke versus Boston College at 6 Eastern time on ESPNU and also live on watch ESPN ESPN is the home court of college hoops Mason Plumley averaging 17 points and 10 rebounds a game and shooting the ball 60% from the floor. 20 years ago, this guy was a pretty good player, too. And you know what? When I view these pictures, I don't think you've changed a bit. Well, wow, that's post the high top fade. The kid didn't play high top fade. I shaved it down a little bit, but man, you're bringing back some pretty good memories right there with that photo. Playing on a pretty good Boston College team that made it to the Elite Eight. In fact, when we look back at that year, you beat some teams with some Hall of Fame coaches, including Bob Knight of Indiana. Yeah, I do remember that, and they had a really good team, and Damon Bailey was on that squad as well, too, so we had a great run that year. Knocked off Dean Smith, North Carolina. Is that correct, too? That was correct. And bowed out to Florida in the Elite Eight. Visiting blue uniforms to UNC Asheville and Myers pass going nowhere. Just the sixth Bulldog turnover in this game and a game that's really been kind of a high octane type show. It's really been a, been a really good 
played basketball game by both teams and high offense some good opportunities and we're seeing some really good patience and also sharing of the basketball by both teams some half court attack right now for the key that's Glasgow is starting to move and official Petrina spots a personal foul of Jeremy Atkinson Check that out, John Wanunu, his second. Covington inside. DJ Covington, 11 points, eight rebounds, three blocks. Showing off the left hand. That was a nice touch that time, going to the left hand. Little baby hook. BMI averages nine made threes a game. It has eight. UNC Asheville has made eight, just averaging a little bit above four. Yeah, it's fun to watch the uh, the core get close to the officials here and uh, weigh in with their opinion. Well, this has been a closely contested game, and right now VMI is trying to put themselves up more than four points, and it's really been close back and forth every time VMI tries to go on a run. UNC Asheville has had an answer. Even though the ball eventually was off of Wanunu, the Kidets were on the line, so the Bulldogs keep the ball, although we'll take a look at the monitor here. With 14.43 left. Let's take a look at it right here, see if we can see it on the replay. That goes up. Really, I think if they can zoom in on that, but the official right on the baseline right there had the best view of it, and he called it right away. So I think if they can't see it, you go with what the original call was, and that's UNC actual ball. In any review, indisputable video evidence comes into play to back up what you're saying. So a stoppage in play, and I would imagine the Bulldogs could use it when you consider the amount of minutes these guys have been playing tonight. Hornsby, 24 minutes. Meyer, 23. Atkinson, 22. Weeks, 21. Now, Balkum knows this. He knows that Eddie's team is not particularly deep. They could go 9 and 10 if necessary. He's played 8. But they're hoping to wear him down before this thing is over. And that's the reason why they switched it up. They've gone through some full court pressure, trapping to try to do that, exactly what you talked about, where are these guys down, because they are not deep at all. Well, Nunu tracks it down, now looks for a guard to hand it off, and he's got to carry it himself. Shot clock is at five. Let's see if Meyer recognizes. He does, off the bounce. A little too strong off the back iron, and rebound to Carr. Although his pass taken away. Now Atkinson loses it. Good hustle on the court by Joe Carr. And I really like how Carr has played in this game. Has not scored a lot of points, but he's a guy that's tough, got good size, and came up with a big loose ball that time. And I like what the referee is doing right here. You do not want this thing to get out of hand. Pull both players together. Guys, knock it off. We've got a good game going on right here. We don't want any extracurricular activity going on. But the cadets don't want to hear any of that. I think they're a little biased. What do you, what do you think? I'm, I'm leaving that one alone with thousands of them right behind us. Not that it's a bad thing. Double team on the post to Covington. Can't score. Fight from loose ball, and it is out of bounds to the Bulldogs, who find themselves trailing here in the second half by four. And still out-rebounded significantly in this game, 28-18. And I like what VMI is doing. Pick up the pressure. Meyer and also Hornby, as you said, have played a lot of minutes. See if this can wear them down as they get late in the second half. And again, Hornsby played 40 minutes with the distance the other night. Misses on that one. Weeks can't clean it up. A break for the key deaths led by Okoye. And instead, 12th turnover tonight on VMI. 
This had potential when it started anyway. This is the thing about his game that's so impressive, so versatile. This time it's going to result in a turnover, but that is a guy that can lead the break, rebound the ball for you. And I felt that time right there probably missed a wide open VMI guy under the basket, but that's one of the rare mistakes he's made all game. In the first half, Byron Hornsby wrecked havoc on VMI, 10 of 15 shooting for 28 points. In the second half, just one made field goal. So how have they been defending him differently? Well, they've been not crowding them on a three-point line, which was a key coming into this game. You can't give those guys space. And right here, you're going to see a beautiful move by Meeks going to the hole, showing off the left. And he's made two or three really nice drives to the hole. And that time, he was able to finish with the left hand. And that's a big bucket for UNC Asheville. Will Meeks shoots the ball from the floor 10 points better percentage-wise than he does from the free throw line. Had a most unusual stat recently where he hit 11 of 12 field goals, which is a phenomenal number, but from the free throw line was 5 of 12. Well, Weeks has won the big South freshman of the week two out of the last four weeks, and if he keeps playing like this right here, he's going to be in line for another one. And his three point play draws the Bulldogs within one. Neither team able to get separation in this game. Biggest lead has been six. Koye in the middle against this zone. Catches, shoots, misses, tap back up and in. Little Bangley gets the basket, and Tim Culver spots a foul as well. This is nice basketball. Gets the zone, find the soft spot in the lane. Beautiful work on the offensive glass, and that's what you want to do if you're VMI against the zone. The soft spot is always in the middle. They did a great job breaking it down that time. They missed a shot. But because they were active on the offensive glass, they're going to have a chance for a three-point play. Malcolm Ennis, 13 offensive rebounds for Virginia Military Institute. That's an impressive number. Seven minutes in the second half. Hornsby on the move. And position to Joe Carr. Tries to attempt a difficult pass picked off and Atkinson on the breakaway and basket for the Bulldogs it's a tough pass trying to thread the needle as the cliche goes on the break Brown had four threes heading into this possession Coye step back jumper now a chance for the Bulldogs to emerge ahead First place or share of first place on the line tonight. A triple team against Cunningham is called for traveling. And the VMI core cadets in the ear of Cunningham. Well, for VMI, they got to do a better job taking care of the ball. That's turnovers you're making it too easy right now for UNC Astro, who I believe has some tired legs. The last thing you want to do is give them easy transition buckets. Well, let's go by the numbers for Beaton Baugh's team with 12 assists on 21 made baskets. Just four first half turnovers. Four turnovers already in the second half. Do you see any type of tiredness? I do, and I think that's the reason why he's going to the zone. He knows he's not deep, so right now he's trying to get his guys a breather by going to zone. Thought we might see Little John or Roberts tonight as ninth and tenth players for UNC Asheville. Not to this point. Meyer, a wide open look. But closing on him in a hurry was Phil Bangley. Bangley looks like he's got about an eight foot wingspan there. That was a great closeout that time on Meyer, who has been lethal from the three point line. Here's Glasgow in transition. And a foul call. The basketball world was shaken on November 14, 2008. Just a little bit. Oh, remind you why. It was a huge day for BMI fans and the core. Times were simpler back when. Life seemed. As we went to break, 55 Trent Meyer, UNC Asheville, picked up a technical foul. So we're going to see some free throws when play commences momentarily. Flashback to November 14, 2008, BMI in Rupp Arena in Lexington. 
Jumping out to an early 14-3 lead, leading at 10 at the half and 90 to 73 with 11 minutes to go. You get the idea. Here's the key dad's day. 111-103 over powerful Kentucky. Well, anytime you put up 111, I don't care who you're playing, but in particular in this case, Kentucky, that's an impressive win. Second year in a row, the Big South had beaten Kentucky. I was there for the Gardner-Webb upset the year previous in 2007. Donnie White, who's the man who actually hired the head coach, Dugger Balkum, eight seasons ago, had a chance to attend that game, but there was also a football game going on in New York, and so he made the decision to go to New York. Wife and him had a chance to do a Broadway play that night. When he came out and he checked his phone, there were a dozen messages. He knew exactly what had happened before he even called anybody back. To the free throw line, off the technical, Rodney Glasgow. And an unfortunate play for UNC Astro. Meyer, who has been really good for them in the first half, knocking down threes. And anytime you show up a referee, I don't care what conference you're in, it doesn't make a difference. You cannot talk to referees like that. And you're going to get a T, and that's really a big swing of events right here. In a close game, every point counts. Glasgow's a good free throw shooter, but has left two of three at the line. Myers technical follows a blocking foul, which also means that it was going to lead to four free throws. Glasgow now shooting his fourth free throw, hits the second one of the four he attempted. 62-59 BMI. And as you know, when you pick up a technical foul, college basketball is also a personal foul. So Meyer now is up to three fouls and on the bench. Weeks. Difficult to handle down low, but stood up for the moment. So now the Bulldogs without one of their principal scorers. Atkinson. Inside shot blocked. Ball loose, picked up by Glasgow. He collides with his man, D.J. Covington, for the moment. Great defensive possession that time by VMI. Shutting off dribble penetration and came up with a huge block. Let's see how long Andy Beatonball goes without Meyer. Tough shot there by Marshall. Saved to Hornsby. Here comes the sophomore guard to Atkinson. 62-61. What a beautiful find that time by Hornsby. Unselfish with the ball. Made it look like he was going to the hole and in the last second dumped it off. Third assist of the night for Hornsby and off the save right in the hands of Keith who was able to engineer the break. You take a chance even when you show great hustle like that about throwing it the wrong way which triggers a transition basket which it did there. 8 and 2, UNC Asheville against the Kedet, 6 and 3 in the league. Jim Barber, Malcolm Huckabee tonight from Cameron Hall in Lexington. And a foul call. Malcolm in the first half, all the fouls favored UNC Asheville as the Bulldogs got the bonus early. Now in the second half, the Bulldogs are over the limit on personals, and again, they're not very deep. No, they are not, and you can see they're back to the zone, 2 3 matchup zone. And What's happening right now, VMI is doing a great job breaking it down by going to the middle, and that time they came up with a foul on Covington, but they need to convert some of these free throws. VMI just 6 of 11. Still ahead by one as we're under 10 minutes for the game. Orange Bay step back jumper. And Glasgow corrals that rebound in the air. Been described as as lightning type player and Hornsby on the other end he's pretty quick as well to the basket Keith Hornsby a basket and one well, Hornsby is playing a lot of minutes but he's coming at you really fast and I like his explosiveness he's got the handle you're going to see a little behind the back right here little European two-step and a finish at the rim and when you put him on the free throw line I'm going to tell you right now Dad, whatever he told him to go from 70 to 94 percent, he is automatic from the free throw line. There's some Catherine in your picture moments ago in a three-point play. And this seems to be vital because Meyer's cooling off literally and figuratively on the bench for a while. And Bulldogs able to regain the lead without one of their principal scores. To the goal, Okoye, he is down. 
Let's hope he's not hurt. Stan Okoye. This is a drive to the basket and a drop to the floor. This is a really dangerous play. And let's hope he's able to go, but he took an awfully hard spill and he looked like he was going up to dunk. And let's see if he got his legs clipped out underneath him. Nice dribble drive going up and Atkinson really got up underneath him on that one. I'd like to see it from a different angle, but now, that's an unfortunate play. You never want to see a guy go into the air and when he's really unprotected, get his legs taken out underneath him. Stan Okoye has, has impressed me in this game. I saw him on film. You hear about him. But to see him live in person, he is an impressive player inside, outside, defensively, and he's really unselfish with the ball. Let's hope he's able to go for the rest of this game. McCoy had 18 first half points. ESPN's journey to the tournament is season long spotlight and games that will impact the NCAA tournament Monday battle for statewide bragging rights the Big 12 Rodney Magruder and the Wildcats against freshman Ben McLemore and the Jayhawks Kansas State Kansas Monday at 9 on ESPN and also live on watch ESPN Kansas won the first match 59 55 but it's coming off a nightmare performance against TCU. South Conference Tournament in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina gets an automatic NCAA berth into the tournament. Speaking of the tournament, Joe Lenardi's bracketology has the last four in, including Illinois, which upset number one Indiana last night. The first four out, Temple, Maryland, Villanova, and Virginia. Andy Katz made an interesting point last night, talking with some of the committee. It said that Illinois with wins now over Butler, Ohio State, and Indiana has become under the watchful eye of the committee. But the feeling still is that there's work to be done for Illini. Agree or disagree? Well, I, I, these guys have such a difficult job, but I think if you beat those four teams, in particular the last one that they had, I don't care if it's at home or on the road, I think you definitely have to catch their eye. And I think it's always about the team that's playing the best towards the end of the year. Okoye still in the game. And missing long on the free throw. And certainly a good sign if you're VMI that he's back out on the court after taking a really hard fall. One of the 2012 Three Legged Stool Award, which honors academics and excellent in athletics, citizenship. One of the few athletes to ever win that award here at the Institute. Impressive. Impressive on the court. Equally as impressive off the court. Trent Meyer still has not returned since his technical foul moments ago for the Bulldogs. Eight to shoot it. Weeks on the low blocks. A blocking foul. VMI sixth team foul of the game. It's on Brown. Jim, I've been really impressed with the freshman weeks. He is a tough matchup. He's a big that can take a guy down in the post. He is quick. He makes really quick spin moves. And when he's had his opportunities, he's made VMI pay. Only the prep school in Asheville, North Carolina. And the prep school has certainly helped guys develop a little quicker than perhaps they might have other ordinary, ordinary situations. The free throw shooting spot on for the Bulldogs, averaging 71% and shooting right at the number. They're clarifying a personal foul here moments ago. And number three, Brian Brown. Well, if there is an area that he needs to improve upon, reach that from the free throw line. 54% from the free throw line. And the, typically when you say that, the opposite happens. So you say a guy's a good free throw shooter, he gets up there and he misses one. And you know if Asheville wins this game, North Carolina Asheville comes through, they're going to have to attribute free throw shooting. That's a possibility because VMI has missed several free throws in the second half. 
Four point lead now for the Bulldogs, and again without Trent Meyer. So let's see how the key debts answer. Stan Okoye had the great first half, schooled off a bit in the second half. Almost gets a friendly roll. It's out of bounds to UNC Asheville. And I think the adjustment by UNC Asheville going to the zone in the second half really has impacted this game. It's given them guys, their guys some rest. And right now they're forcing VMI into a jump shooting team. And you can live with that if you're UNC Asheville. Both of these teams with a 48 hour turnover. Both have a play on Wednesday night. So it kind of resembles an NCAA tournament format. You play a game, you win, you come back. You know all about that. We managed to cop right that one year, and now we have another injured player. This time, remember the key deaths. Rodney Glasgow, the junior from Brooklyn, is down. And the game is getting physical right now, and I think the referees are going to probably have to pull po coaches and also teams. I'm not sure if there's an elbow thrown, but. They're going to go and look at the monitor. They're going to walk both teams over, as they should, and they're going to come take a look at the monitor. Get a chance to determine if it's a flagrant one or a flagrant two foul. Flagrant two is the more serious of the potential fouls. And that's what the referees are looking at. Right now, you're going to see Hornsby push the ball off the court. Now the play's over. Going to keep her eye right in the center here. The ref hands on the ball. And I didn't see much. And, uh, you know, in those situations, you're looking for a flailing elbow deliberate. On that replay right there, I did not see much. Looked like he was just trying to go, and I think that's a good call by the referees, but I like that they want to get it right. You want to make sure nobody's throwing a flagrant elbow. Corey Littlejohn, number 22, and Blue was involved in the play, but just a basketball play as it turns out. He's got the ball right now, matched up against Rodney Glasgow. Littlejohn seeing his first action tonight as they go nine deep. And Weeks scores the ball and pushes the lead up to six. Matching the largest lead of the game for UNC Astro dating back to the first half. All of this with Trent Meyer on the shelf. Inside Covington. DJ Covington at six foot nine. Was a freshman a year a couple seasons ago. He's been impressive, and that's a nice touch right there for the big fella, not coming down with it and finishing at the rim. Heath Hornsby has hardly come out of this game. Knocks down a three, and that is the largest lead of the game for the Bulldogs. Well, we watched film session this morning with VMI, and that was one of the concerns. Pick and roll defense, in particular, against Hornsby. For Hornsby, his seventh 20-point game or better this year. Who's going to answer now for the key decks? Covington trying to keep it alive. It is out of bounds, and they'll get the ball after the break. Keith Hornsby has just shot UNC Asheville to a seven-point lead. Back to business at the post in a moment.